we're going to learn some of the fundamental skills when it comes to studying chemistry, including the units of measurement, uncertainty in measurements and significant figures, density, and some of the other properties of matter. There are two types of observations, qualitative observations and quantitative observations. Qualitative observations are observations that do not involve numbers, like observing the color of a leaf or the smell of a banana. Quantitative observations are observations that do involve numbers, like measuring mass, length, or temperature. A quantitative observation is only meaningful in science if it includes both a number and a unit. For example, if I told you that a banana had a mass of 120, you would think, 120 what? I've only given you half of the observation. Now to say the banana has a mass of 120 grams makes some sense, because I have provided both the number and the unit. Science has settled upon an international system of measurement units. The system is based on the metric system, and we call it the International System, or SI units. The SI units are not always the most convenient measurement. For example, it wouldn't be so convenient to express the width of a pencil in the SI unit of a meter. A meter is quite large compared to a pencil. So, the metric system uses a base 10 conversion system to create more appropriate units that are geared towards the object being measured. So the width of a pencil in meters is about 0.006 meters. That's six thousandth of a meter. It's not very convenient to say it that way. But we can convert that into millimeters, a much more convenient unit. To convert units, we use a method called dimensional analysis. To use dimensional analysis to convert a unit, first write the given quantitative observation, include the number and the unit. Multiply by a conversion factor that includes the old unit and the new unit. To convert from meters into millimeters, we'll use the conversion factor that compares millimeters to a meter. There are 1000 millimeters in one meter. So 0.006 meters times 1000 millimeters per meter gives six millimeters. Temperature is a special unit when it comes to converting because we often use the unit Celsius to make temperature measurements in the laboratory. So we often need to convert from Celsius into the SI unit of temperature called the Kelvin. This is not a metric system conversion. It's a unique and common conversion though in chemistry nonetheless. To convert from Celsius to Kelvin, you simply add 273 to the temperature in Celsius. So 25 degrees Celsius is 298 Kelvin. To go from Kelvin to Celsius, subtract 273 from the temperature in Kelvin. So 298 Kelvin would be 25 degrees Celsius. Now you're probably wondering, why use Kelvin if we always measure in Celsius? Well, Kelvin is the only temperature unit that does not go into the negatives. When you hit zero Kelvin, you can't get any colder than that. It's called absolute zero. Every measurement has a bit of uncertainty. This apple has a mass of 100 grams. But if I were to use a better balance, I may get a mass of 100.10 grams. My original measurement was rounded off. All measurements have some uncertainty. It is extremely important to communicate measurements well so that we indicate how certain we are and we don't report measurements to be more precise than we have actually had the ability to measure. I was really careful to use the term precise rather than accurate. It's important to understand the difference between these two terms. Accuracy is the agreement of measurements to some true value. Precision is the agreement of multiple measurements to the same quantity. For example, an archer fires an arrow at a target and misses the target each time, but they all hit in the same area. So although the archer is inaccurate, the archer is very precise. So how do you know how precise a number is? It's all about reporting the digits we are certain about. The digits we are certain about are called significant digits or significant figures. There are a set of rules to determine if a number is significant or not. Number one, non-zero digits are always significant. The rest of the rules determine if a zero is significant or not. The second rule states that leading zeros are never significant. That is, zeros that come before a non-zero digit. These zeros are generally just holding the place of a decimal, and they don't contribute to the number. The third rule is that zeros between non-zero digits are significant. The fourth rule is that trailing zeros are not significant unless there is a decimal place somewhere in the number. And then finally, scientific notation only shows significant figures. We need to keep track of the significant digits when we do arithmetic in science. You can only be as precise as your least precise measurement, so you need to keep track of significant figures as you perform calculations. Let's practice this by calculating the density of an object. Density is a measurement that relates the mass of a substance to its volume. 
Mass is a measurement of the amount of matter, and volume is the measurement of how much space the matter takes up. A very dense object will have a lot of matter in a small amount of space. To calculate density, divide the mass by the volume of the object, d equals m over v. In chemistry, mass is usually measured in units of grams, and volume is usually measured in units of milliliters, or centimeters cubed. Milliliters and centimeters cubed are the same thing. One milliliter is one centimeter cubed. Milliliter is used for liquids, and centimeters cubed is used for solids. This brick has a mass of 1,300 grams, and it has a volume of 967 centimeters cubed. What is its density? Density is equal to mass divided by volume, so 1,300 grams divided by 967 centimeters cubed equals 1.344364 grams per centimeter cubed. Well, that's what our calculator reports anyways. I need to round that answer so it is as precise as my least precise measurement. 967 has three significant figures, and 1,300 has two significant figures because trailing zeros are not significant unless there is a decimal place somewhere in the number. Only the one and three are significant. I need to round my answer to two significant figures. So I'll round it to 1.3 grams per centimeter cubed. So chemistry is all about observing matter. And this is anything that has mass and takes up space. This is kind of why we're so concerned with density because density includes both aspects of this definition of matter, mass and volume. Matter is an extremely broad definition because, well, it includes just about everything we can see and a whole bunch of stuff that we can't see. We can organize matter into different categories. Most of the matter in the universe is found mixed up with other types of matter, like the air around us. It's mostly oxygen and nitrogen gas, but there's a whole bunch of other stuff there as well. These are called mixtures, when substances are physically combined. There are times when one type of matter is not mixed with any other type of matter. We call this a pure substance. There are two types of mixtures. Take a look at this salt water and this pizza. They're both mixtures, yet they look very different. Salt water is a mixture, but I can't see the different parts of the mixture. It looks uniform throughout the mixture. Pizza is a mixture, and I can see the different parts of the mixture. It does not look uniform throughout. A homogeneous mixture is a mixture where I cannot see the different parts of the mixture. A heterogeneous mixture is a mixture where I can see the different parts of a mixture. There are two types of pure substances. There are compounds, and there are elements. Elements are these things on the periodic table, like helium gas is just made up of helium atoms. They aren't mixed with anything else, or combined with any other element on the periodic table. Compounds are chemically combined elements, so water is a compound. It's when hydrogen and oxygen have chemically bonded to each other to make the molecule H2O. Pure water is a pure substance because it is composed of only H2O molecules and nothing else. So chemistry is about describing and organizing matter, but it is also about observing and explaining how matter changes. There are two ways that matter can change. Matter can change chemically, or matter can change physically. A chemical change is one in which the matter will be something completely new before and after the change. We usually call these a chemical reaction. A physical change is when matter is the same type of matter before and after the change. So, like water freezing. The water was liquid before, and it became solid, so it definitely changed. But the matter is still water. It just changed from liquid water to frozen solid water. It's still just H2O molecules.